Hello everyone and welcome to another Total Education Centre lecture. My name is Bruce Pattinson I'd like to remind you that these lectures are brought to you free so if you'd like to help us out please press the like button below, leave a comment, any questions you have we're happy to answer. Don't forget too to visit our website totaleducationcentre.com.au here you'll find lots of educational resources for you to use if you're a teacher. There are teacher teaching units on this topic. There are also student lecture notes on this topic that add to the discussions that we're having here. We hope you enjoy this lecture and you're looking forward to it. Thank you. Hello, today I'm here to talk to you about 1984 and Metropolis. We're going to look first at the context of Metropolis. Secondly, we're going to look at the context of 1984 and then we'll do a little wrap up at the end. Well, if we're looking at context, and we know context is imp extremely important in this module because the rubric says we have to look at the context and compare them. So we need to look for similarities in the two contexts and see if those similarities or any differences go towards outcomes in the text and how they're presented. Well, if we look very carefully at Metropolis and we see the context of that, Lang's 1928-29 film comes at a very important time in European history specifically after the First World War, Germany was in a lot of conflict. There was um, the Weimar Republic, and our students of history will understand this far better, but for just general knowledge, the Weimar Republic was a, a government that Germany established in the 1920s to correct the problems they had after the First World War. Now, the Weimar Republic was always beset with problems. Of course, the Great Depression came, uh, so economics were bad the politics of the left, the politics of the right, they could never get it right. Even in, in the, um, the relative security of the Stresemann years, there wasn't anything that could be really be done for Germany. So there was great conflict and there was great turmoil. And this, of course, led to the rise of Hitler much later. That's not for us today. The, the stress and social uh, instability is reflected, of course, clearly in Metropolis, where we see both the workers in the underground and the elite at the top but that's for another lecture. More importantly, we need to look specifically at what the influence of context on the film. I'd like to read to you a, a short piece from the Film Education website where it talks about Metropolis. And if you type into your search engine, um, Film Education Metropolis, you'll find the whole article. And I think it's well worth going to and well worth reading. I'm just gonna read you a very short paragraph because I think it's very clear and succinct in what it does and what it says about the film. And I think it'll help you a lot, even if you don't go to that site. So putting my glasses on, it says, Metropolis is concerned with wider cultural and political issues, evidenced visually as well as thematically. The film's social preoccupations have been described as a commentary on the political situation that existed in Germany at the time, but also served as a warning of where Germany was heading in the future. The film was made during Germany's Weimar Republic, the country's first attempt at creating a democracy in the very difficult years following the First World War. The economic and political aftermath of Germany's defeat led to hyperinflation, revolution on the streets, and a general sense of anxiety and dissatisfaction with the ruling powers. And I'd like you to keep, I'm just breaking away from the paragraph, for a moment, I'd like you to keep that term anxiety in mind, because anxiety, I think, is a correlating factor in both texts later on, as well as in a correlating factor in both texts. For the German people, cinema offered a means of escaping the hardships of daily life. Historical and sci-fi genres were popular at the time for their representations of other worlds and distant times. For Lang to make a realistic film that dealt directly with the troubles of the day would not have pleased German audiences. Instead, he tapped into Germany's power struggles, issues of poverty and conflict, and fears for the future, using an entirely constructed and heavily stylized futuristic landscape filled with symbolism and metaphors to convey political messages. And I think that paragraph really clearly sums up what Lang's trying to do in that context of Metropolis. We, we later move into, of course, it, the rise of Hitler and the Second World War, and we know that from our research that Hitler was a fan of Metropolis and liked those sort of social divisions and liked the way Lang had portrayed it. Lang, of course, didn't do it for Hitler, and he was certainly concerned about the way Germany was heading. If we look very carefully at that, that sense of anxiety that's, that's built up into the film with the working class and how this sort of automated like machinery, we can see that the, the oncoming mechanisation that was a result of the First World War and the sense of manufacturing that came out of that is also inherent in the film. And you need to think about how that impacts on the film and how that links to what Orwell says in 1984. 
you must also remember very clearly that Lang's wife, um, Theo von Harbour, was instrumental in the creation of the film and she developed a screenplay, um, she developed a lot of the work and she was a central player in the production of Metropolis so we shouldn't leave her out in our ideas and if you go to anywhere like Wikipedia you can research and find her and you'll see her input into the film. She had a she wanted that distinct moral ending in Metropolis and she saw that was the future and she was also the picked out um, Frida as the actor who played that part and that's very important in the film because he is that central character and while he's been criticised for his sort of over melodramatic portrayal of the film I think that the role he has suits that kind of style and it certainly result, um, suits the melodramatic ending and the, the, the heart binding the two separate pieces together. And I think that's what that anxiety and, and the disruption and distinctions in society at the time and in the context of that film, that certainly impacts into the film. Next, I'd like to look at 1984 and the context of Orwell's work. Welcome back, everyone. Now I'd like to talk to you about the context of 1984. Now, 1984 was written during the years 1947 and 48 and it published eventually in 1949. This is especially important contextually because it comes after the Second World War. Now, if you think back to our talk on Metropolis when we t it was came out of the First World War, this novel certainly comes out of the Second World War, and it's certainly much bleaker and darker. The First World War was supposed to be the war to end all wars, while the Second World War was, nearly did the same thing. And at the end of it, Europe was exhausted. Britain was exhausted. Everybody was exhausted. But there was a lot of anxiety still because of the coming Cold War. We saw the two, the totalitarian regime in Russia under, with communism come forward. And Orwell was thinking about those sorts of regimes when he wrote 1984. If we look very carefully, it says, it's important, and these are from the notes, the teaching notes that we have on the website. It is important to understand that the novel's impact on its publication and still for modern audiences. And I'll, I'll just mention that briefly before I go on. Everyone says when you get this novel, 1984, is it still relevant? Well, yes, it's extremely relevant because it talks about totalitarian regimes. It talks about power. It take, talks about free will and loss of individuality and all those issues that are still extremely relevant today, especially with the oncoming technology and the things we talk about today. Those sorts of fears are still there. People are still anxious about those things. That's why 1984 remains extremely relevant today. So from its context, and although 1984 has gone, it's still extremely important. For example, the term Orwellian stems from the constant surveillance and control highlighted in the novel and the lack of freedom and liberty given to the individual for the betterment of the all-encompassing state. Now, quite frequently you'll see that word in the media and certainly your teacher will use it and you'll hear it in social circles occasionally when you're at university or wherever you're going with this study. Um, the term Orwellian is very important. and It's that all-encompassing totalitarianism that covers every aspect of people's lives. This term is still used to describe regimes, organizations, corporations, and even individuals who seek to take control of people's lives. At the time of writing, of course, 1984 was nearly 40 years into the future, but it's still significant to modern readers because nationalism, totalitarianism, the future, censorship, media control, surveillance, power, conformity, and free will and even that general concept of the dystopian society still resonate with modern readers and have impact and relevance. So coming out of World War II, the novel of course still has that ongoing war between the three great states. The, the sense and the mood and the tone of 1984 is extremely dark and bleak. It's that post-war um, rationing, nothing's available, bombs still falling. It's a, it's a world that's been completely disrupted. The difference, I think, between Metropolis and 1984 in the sense of context and what it came out of, there was more of a sense of hope at the end of World War I that things would be right. And we see that in the film Metropolis, whereas in 1984, people often read it and see no hope at all. I don't necessarily agree with that analysis or interpretation, and perhaps if you keep reading past where it says the end and you look at the language and how 
and what he writes afterwards, there is, I think, a sense of hope in that. And perhaps the world hadn't gone completely the way that he says in the novel. However, there's that sense of darkness and certainly there's that sense of anxiety in society that we saw in Metropolis. All the characters in 1984 stem directly from that sense of anxiety that was in social circles, in the public, um, and certainly at the height of the Cold War, that, that real feeling that the end of the world was sort of nigh and there was all those sort of negative feelings in society and the world. So when we look at those two contexts and we can compare them, we see that both texts came out of a war era, both texts came out of a sense of confusion, and both texts came out of the, the composer's need to express that and feel that and explain it away. And we can see, of course, differences in both those contexts and those great similarities. And I think later on when we go to talk about the text in greater detail, that you'll see how those two contexts impact greatly on, on both texts. Thank you.